Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a machine learning library like SKLearn, Keras, Piano, PyTorch. But this is little famous, it was introduced by Google Brain Team and released as an open source in 2015. And TensorFlow 1x version, there is some complexities available. So most of the machine learning developers, they will not be using TensorFlow directly. Instead of that, they are using Keras API and the wrapper of the TensorFlow 1x and they will be released. But in two, TensorFlow 2x will be a combination of TensorFlow 1x and Keras API. And they, directly you can interact with your data without any session. That is called as an eager execution that they will be given in TensorFlow 2x by default. Before discuss about TensorFlow, we just know what is Tensor. Tensor is an n-dimensional data. That is, you are going to handle it via this library. So I have given some example. If it is a zero dimension, then it's called as a scalar, which means a single value. If it is a one dimension, then it's called as a vector, which means all collections of the programming will come to vector. And two dimension tensor is a matrix, which means row and column is available, then we can utilize it. And there is a lot of other tensors are also available, 3D, 4D, like I have given some example. We just discussed about the installation. So if you want to install the TensorFlow, you can use pip install TensorFlow. Or if you want to install with any specific version, you can mention it. I'm using TensorFlow 2x version. We can see that version here. I'm using 2.1.1 version of TensorFlow. We can see some example with that. So this is a zero dimension data. I just declare as a constant value with only one value, which is a scalar. Here it will be declared as a zero and this is the value and this is the shape of the value and what is the type of the data. This all will be declared. If you want to retrieve that only shape or D type, you can call the method with that variable. Example D dot shape, or D zero dot shape, D zero dot D type something. Then you can pick up this record separately. Next one is vector, a group of data that is, I'm going to store it here. You can see this value is a group of data. I can store it and there's a shape of this value in one dimension and it will be stored as a float values. Likewise, two into two as a row and column matrix, I'm going to store it. Here is an example. Likewise, you can go n dimension of data. This is a three dimension of values. I just declare two into two into two. So two element with the two row and two column. That is the meaning for this shapes. There is a multiple bit of data type is available with the same data type name. Here are some examples available based on the bit you can declare your data type. So I just declared zero tensor and a three dimension sensor for the example. So here you can see there's a zero tensor value will be showing to you as a zero and it will be providing with the integer values so difference between the variable and constant variable you can change but constant you cannot change it once you declare the constant you cannot change any time but both will do n dimension of data handling here some example i have already declared x1 value as a variable this is will be stored as a 23 is a value now i'm supposed to change the value via assign function now it's changed to 100 but the same i'm trying to do that i just declare as x1 with constant as 100 and i'm trying to change it it will not be allowed because the attribute error will be throwing due to the constant declaration so some other data type values available you can see this next reshape once you declare the variable you want to reshape it that is also possible here you can see this one Yeah, this is the value. This value you want to reshape it by just using the same variable as x2. This value already in 2 into 2 into 3 matrix is available. Now I am supposed to change it to 1 row and 12 column. That I am going to declare it. So this is the entire 1 row with 12 column will be available. If suppose I want to change into 12 row and 1 column, that is also possible. Likewise, you can declare and reshape your values with new variable. 
next declaring a variable with time that is also possible here i just declare the value with the 202 as an integer but i just mentioned as a float value now you can see the values 202 as a float likewise you can do it ranking ranking is very important thing in the beginning also we have seen the dimension of the value by a ranking method only so ranking will help to find the variable of dimensions so mostly whenever you're doing some tensorflow multiplication or any operation that output what will be the dimension of data you'll be getting it that information you can collect from ranking so x64 is a zero dimension i think yeah now i just check this one there is a value it will be declared here numpy zero means zero dimension suppose x2 x2 variable available with three dimensions of data this three dimensions of data i'm going to retrieve here yeah it will be mentioning as a three dimension so which help to identify which dimension of data you will be creating it that is the use of ranking here some example for constant also i just declare as a three dimension of data and i can retrieve it this is the sample for this constant value next slicing slicing help to slicing your data and pick it up a particular value between this matrix so here i just mentioning the t value this t value i'm going to retrieve one to one into two we'll see that with some clear example so here this is the first value so which means this is a zero element this is the first element come out and then it will be first row this is a zero row this is the first row so this row will be coming out and then second column so four 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 one four is the value in this there's a zero column this is the first column this is the second column i just refer for second column so this is the value that will be reflected here you can see likewise tensor slicing is possible to pick it up your particular values also like pandas you can retrieve the data between the indexing values that is also possible here's some example i have given you like casting also we can do it uh, i supposed to declare everything as an integer value but i am trying to convert into the float data type you can see here next tensor operation we can see some aggregations between the tensor via this tensor operation I just declared two variables a and b with some value. I just going to aggregate that, and this is the value. Now I'm going to do the additions of a and b. That's a C value matrix. We'll see the output here. Yeah, it's a based on the indexing. It's just going to be added the values. So one and five will be in the zero index. It will be added and giving us six. Likewise, all other matrix will be calculated and giving to you. likewise sec square is available based on the square i can aggregate the square matrix on that output of c and you can see here addition and subtraction also we have that likewise multiplication you can do it based on the indexing multiplication is available there is a direct indexing multiplication and also matrix multiplication you can see the example with matrix multiplication then you can understand the concept here i declare the value one two three four as a one matrix five six seven eight and i am doing matrix multiplication so this row count will be matched with this column row count then only we can do this matrix multiplication we can calculate here 1 into 5 plus 2 into 7 1 into 6 plus 2 into 8 3 into 5 plus 4 into 7 3 into 6 plus 4 into 8 5 14 19 6 16 22 15 28 43 18 32 50 so this is the final output of this matrix multiplication
we can see here this value directly match with this one likewise the calculation will be happen in the back end that's it friend in next video we are going to see with some machine learning library with tensorflow integration thank you